Travis Wayne Goodsell. Uh, as YouTube has an analytical program that results in when we click in on one dream, a billion others of that channel and of uh, related channels uh, pop up on your screen. Uh, well, uh, uh, YouTube has now recommended uh, a billion uh, uh, Americans who are having dreams this year. Dreams about the second coming. Uh, there are some Mormons, uh, but the majority of them out there are Christian. And so, of course, the titles in, include Rapture Dreams. <laughs> uh, but uh, I, I heard one, and uh, uh, she uh, talked about uh, a fulfillment from passage in Revelation. Uh, and so I she said she couldn't figure out how the wolf played into the scripture and thus in her dream and so I I chose to comment on on hers um, but of course didn't present myself as a Mormon I, I presented myself presented my answer uh, appealing to her Christianity uh, to uh, just let her know that Wolf is understood as uh, the false prophet in Matthew 7. And so uh, in the last days in Matthew 24, uh, false prophets are warned about and tried to let her know about that, that Revelation has a false prophet in there as well. And so her seeing a, a wolf in her dream, along with the other Revelation symbols, uh, was why she was having the wolf also appear. Uh, for those of you who may not know uh, whether you are Mormons spying on me so that you're waiting for me to make any kind of negative comment about that church so that you can put a thumbs down and show everybody that you've put a thumbs down as you cowardly hide yourself as, your, as to your identity. Uh, and then you find out that your thumbs down is not showing up <laughs> because I've blocked you. Uh, but uh, or if you're a non-Mormon or an ex-Mormon, which terms are are slur terms of the Mormons against us? Uh, their hate terms that Mormons use to call us. Uh, but uh, uh, Joseph Smith uh, claims to have uh, seen Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ in his 1838 version of events. Uh, doing my research in, church, in LDS Church history, I came to find out that there were quite a number of people uh, in the colonies uh, and around New York in the area uh, who were also having dreams and visions of Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ. It was Thomas B. Marsh's eight-year-old son who had told Joseph Smith about his seeing uh, Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ and then Joseph Smith goes and tells his account. <laughs> and like I've been telling you guys, uh, the Smiths encoded the scriptures. Uh, not just the Doctrine and Covenants. If the Doctrine and Covenants was encoded, why not others? So yes, the Book of Mormon was encoded. That's why those who are critics of the church know that the Book of Mormon was plagiarized. And that's because it was encoded 
specifically using those particular uh, books that were used to plagiarize it, as Mormons have already put their thumbs down and have left this video in anger. like I've been trying to explain uh, most recently is that uh, Joseph Smith did not believe in the second coming of Jesus Christ of the Gospels. Joseph Smith was more in line with uh, the Jewish version from Jeremiah chapter 23 about a mortal man who is to be the Christ, the King, the Anointed One, and thus the Messiah. And, uh, and so, uh, when the Book of Mormon uses Jesus, it's not talking about Jesus. It's uh, using the Jewish interpretation for the last day's Messiah. And uh, so, Jesus coming to America? Well, it's not a history. We know that much. Uh, but it is encoded, and it's not Jesus of the Gospels. And so, interesting how Jesus, Nephi, and Jesus talking to Nephi about Samuel and Lamanite's records uh, all are related to one and the same character. And they just use different characters about a different aspect of them. Because if you recognize, uh, Jesus does not stay in America to be the king on the throne of the New Jerusalem. He gives it to Nephi to become the king in New Jerusalem, which is called Bountiful. And they're talking about Samuel, the Lamanite, who had prophesied of all these things that were to happen. And so Samuel uh, means name of God. What is the name of God to Joseph Smith? Amen. Who is Amun? The Egyptian god of noonday, the highest sun. So, son of the highest. His father and son are named Amun. And so that's how you can decode Joseph Smith, or the Smiths, because it wasn't Joseph Smith who wrote the Book of Mormon. Uh, Smith Sr. was the major contributor and orchestrator of the Book of Mormon and what was to be put in it. As, uh, he paid Sidney Rigdon by uh, uh, having Sidney Rigdon fulfill his desire to rewrite the whole Bible as he left the Campbellite church because uh, Alexander Campbell only wanted to do the New Testament revision. And then uh, Sidney Rigdon also got to have a uh, speaking platform with a larger audience and uh, also was able to have uh, his one day Sabbath day observance for the sacrament. That's all Sidney Rigdon. Uh, the Smiths, however, through Oliver Cowdery in the Zoramite passage, uh, lets us know that uh, it does, you don't need to have just one day. You can worship God anytime, anywhere, any day. Every day, if you want. Uh, that was Alma and Amulek's message. Uh, to the poor Zoramites who were kicked out of their Ramiumptum synagogues that they had built. And then after they built them, they were unemployed and thus became poor. And so, uh, yeah, the symbolisms are clear once you understand the real church history. Um, you can easily decode it. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, this a Christian woman, uh, she doesn't know the Mormon church. If she does, she calls it evil. Maybe she'll see that the church is the wolf in her dream. <laughs> but she does seem to indicate that her church is also in apostasy, which I was interested in wanting to listen to, but haven't gotten to it. Uh, but... Uh, It's an interesting twist for her. She's born and raised in a Christian household, teaches the Bible, specifically of Revelation, and uh, then decides to become 
and uh, she uses the word atheist, but she says in her video that she was, was it, I don't think it was agnostic, but uh, uh, she, she seemed to go through a rebellious phase against religion. And then she had a conversion experience where she went back to religion uh, and then starts having dreams as a result. Uh, and uh, now she's talking about the church being an apostasy. <laughs> but uh, yeah, lots of people were uh, anticipating the coming of the kingdom of God during Joseph's time as others were not only seeing Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ but were being told that no church on the earth was correct that they were all in apostasy so Joseph Smith was not alone there were separate written accounts by unrelated people who never joined the Mormon church And so, it's not a surprise for our day and time with a coronavirus, with a high concentration of Christian followers, uh, for people to start having dreams and uh, other warnings that they uh, are going through the last days. So uh, I'm hoping that with the signs in the heaven right now, although it's on the other side of the world <laughs> uh, at this moment, we'll see it again in the morning. But uh, uh, the, the sign will correspond with the event on the day that it occurs. Like I've pointed out, not all signs have their fulfillment on earth on the day that it's given. Uh, some are, are plus or minus a month. Uh, but uh, uh, we shall see. Um, but like I've been trying to inform you that Mormons are going to be disappointed that their understanding of the second coming is not going to happen likewise for Christians uh, because Constantine created their God if Constantine created their God anything from that God which is a false God is not going to happen either so Mormons with Brigham Young and then changing to Christian God after Brigham Young was exposed as ridiculous with Heavenly Father as Adam uh, uh, all of it false gods all apostasy shall we say uh, the only one to still s survive is the Jewish God or the Jewish Christ because uh, they already have a God they, need, they don't need to worry about their uh, afterlife salvation uh, it's uh, their salvation here on earth that they're concerned about and wanting desperately to have and uh, I was hoping that the the second of the three days of darkness that the Book of Mormon talks about uh, would be a uh, clear indicator to the Jews that the time is nigh at hand uh, as this is the first full moon after that annular solar eclipse that uh, spread across the whole old world in a very clear and distinct symbol uh, and so um, that's why I'm saying let's hope that that uh, tomorrow we will have the day of fulfillment rather than having to wait and, or being something else uh, instead but uh, there is no other option. Uh, uh, well, I guess there are, <laughs> but those aren't li really much of the legitimate options. You know, lizard people from outer space, for example. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> the 
people were most likely drunk or a high when they were watching V, the miniseries event, when I was a kid. Alien the lizards, dude! And then when they finally pull out of their their drug state, they're like, I know, I saw it, man. It was real. They were lizards from outer space. But uh, yeah. So uh, we have to wait and see. But uh, I found it interesting that uh, as with Joseph's day, so it is with today, that people are being informed that the Christ is coming. Even though back in Joseph's day they had their own understanding of who the Christ was going to be, our day as well, we have different understandings of who Christ is and how he's coming and when he's coming or what form he'll take. So. We shall see.